All right, everyone, welcome to my home garage. Uh, today is going to be a uh, rather simple install. We're not going to complete this today, but wanted to show you how we're going to mount my um, Cox hose reel. So we're doing two power, two air, and this is the first time we've done the gray ones. Uh, I wanted to do black in here, but because we don't have any photos of gray, I'm going to fall on the sword for all of us. The gray is actually pretty nice. It's kind of a matte finish. We'll show you that in a minute. But uh, we're also going to swap. Uh, we do. So these are custom OG version, the hose reels that we order with a different spring, with a different swivel, uh, and of course we put a different hose, a Prevost hose in there with a Prevost swiveling coupler, uh, and then we're going to modify the power cord reels as well. We're going to put a, uh, a Prolock uh, power cord in there, so swap that out as well. Um, someday I'd like to order the power cord reels without power cord in them, uh, so we have loose reels. But uh, Mike and I are going to uh, put some blocking up in the attic and get these things mounted. And we're going to do, you know, we're going to just two on the ceiling. The original plan was to do four, uh, but because I'm not able to do the garage doors I wanted to do, we can't put them on the ceiling where the garage door goes. Or I guess we could, but it really wouldn't make a lot of sense. And so, I mean, the garage is only 22 feet deep and these are 50 foot long reels, so we should be fine. So we'll show you some cool stuff we got in here. If you haven't watched the other videos of this, this garage, uh, again, this is my house. I call this my temporary house. I hold me over house until we build a real house. Um, but um, the, uh, the, the concept was originally put a lift, put uh, roll up doors and the homeowners association losers uh, decided that um, they, weren't, uh, they weren't nice enough. Uh, the, the doors that are on here are, uh, are 10 times louder, but somehow potentially more silent. Uh, and they, um, they're junk, but somehow nicer. So uh, the door that's sitting over there that was $3,300 is not allowed to replace the, what are these, like 400, 500 bucks, something like that? Six. Yeah, 600 bucks, these co-play garbage. Anyway, I digress. Let's get to work. All right. All right. So right, let's get so the attic access open. So, so, so we already up. have. We already know there's an 20 outlet. amp, and these are 20 yeah. amp up plugs, yep. so we're good. So I'm going to use those plugs as a reference. Yeah. So we're going to put the edge, like I'm thinking, the edge of the plate, um, edge of the mounting plate, somewhere like, like here. Yeah, maybe a little bit further into the garage, just not to interfere with the light. I'm thinking, so you want, no, what, I'm talking front edge or rear, back edge. What so I'd like the hose reels to ideally to be like on this black line. Yeah, that's how was, so the edge, if we put the back edge of the wow. plate here, the reel would be somewhere in this area, like this, about like that. What are you thinking? Yeah. Or do you want them more forward? So you want to put the edge, the back. The, like, so I'm thinking edge of this plate, this back side, you want to put it like, on this side here, so the reel's out here more. Mm, I want the center of the thing to be right on the center of this line, the center of the reel. Okay. Boom. Right there. That's about right then. Because that's about center, right about there. Yeah. I got one of those little level thingies. I can the use plumb bob? Or a no, laser like level. A laser thingy. Oh, we got a laser level? Jeez. I don't know where it is, but we got it here somewhere. It's back at OGHQ. <laughs> no, it's here somewhere. Where is it? Gosh. Did we put it here? Ah. Uh, what the heck? How did we, I miss we that? Missed I it. knew I had it. <laughs> God dang it. How did we not open that drawer? Because these were in the way. We probably just figured they weren't there. See, it fit perfectly there. I remember yeah. that. Yep. It did. All right. I don't have the tripod, though. We don't need it. Okay. We can just lay it on the ground, actually. Okay. Back got, to work. You bought green, huh? Uh, I just bought whatever they had. <sighs> Let's see here. Green seems fancier. Let's see. I don't know if you, uh, let's see, where's the button on this one? Mode. Should go crisscross. Oh, there you go. Yeah, but, okay, there we go. There. Let's get it back further. <laughs> One thing I'm thinking. So, all right. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's the way to go. See, if we leave this center line, I'm just trying to vision where the base plate would be in reference to the uh, outlet. So, that 
that's that. So base plate. If we go. What do you think, bro? So that puts the edge of the base plate at that line, the back edge of the ace base plate. The, uh, blocking? Yeah. Check this out, people. Uh oh. If you haven't seen this, this is what you want in your life. Magic stairs. Yeah. Which would have been perfect if I had roll-up doors and I could open it with the door closed or open. So what I do is always make sure to lock this so I don't accidentally open the door up. And I always so forget that lock. What's this power step cost? 3,600 bucks. It's not bad actually. And then look, no hands. I know, it's nice. We sent the Christmas tree up here earlier. Secret stuff happens up here, people. Can't show you. Secret Maddie lair. What the heck? Michelle just puts it right in the middle. Get this whole thing organized. Not there's this one, TVs. but the next one. Because there's outlets, so we should be able to see that. So it's that one here. Yeah. This see, one. there's the outlet right next to the light. Yep, yep. So it's going to actually dictate where our hose reel goes, just butting, butting up right next to the light. Well, yes and sort of because... Oh, uh, we're going to have to do two of them. Two stringers, right? Well, I mean, they're going to go... It's going to go here between... So this is in no, the way. No, not that one. We go here? Yeah, see the box next to the light there on your left? Yeah. Nope, nope, it's not that light. This one here? Nope, not that light. Which one? The light? other light. This one yeah, here? Yeah, that light. Okay. So see, there, there's the electric box right there. Nope. Nope. Where are we looking, Maddie? I'm trying to, which one's going that's through the That's the box, door. right right, right below your face. Yeah, okay, this one. Yeah, okay. that's I didn't the box. see it. All right, so then we're going there. So that means we're going to have to put the, uh, the blocking to the to your right. Yeah, it's going to go in this bay. Yeah. All right, so this one will block to the right. And so we need to come, what is that, uh, six inches off the stud is where... It's where the block... Off, off the box is where yeah. the stud is. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's actually center of box is five and a quarter. Well, we're going to come inside, so we're going to come to the right. So our hose reels are going to be mounted basically between those two studs to the right. So if we can catch two bolts here, mm -hmm. and then the rest, the other three sets of bolts in the blocking, we'd be good. And then the same situation would apply over on the other one. These are very important, necessary tools here for <laughs> homeowner use. Yeah. These are, this is in case you have to fix your sink. You know those big giant nuts under your sink? Use this 46 pound wrench, 80 millimeter. So, I don't know if people have heard the term, leave the line or take the line. So when you measure off, right? So this 22 half is to the edge of this, right? Where we wanna be, right? So when you mark it, you're gonna have the line is gonna be inside the 22 half. So in this situation, you'd be take it, you'd leave the line. So we're gonna cut on this side of the line. So when I'm done cutting, the line will still be there. Otherwise, if I cut, cut the line through the line, it'll be too short. So in this situation, we're leaving the line. So like if, if one guy's cutting and one guy's laying out, when you hand the guy the lumber, you're going to say, leave the line, take the line. Uh, that way they'll know which side to cut on it. So that just depends how you mark it. Right. It depends which way you're measuring from. Yeah. Which side you're measuring from. So. so there we go. Left the line and that should be 22 half. What are we listening to? What's that? 22 half. Wow. Oh, wow. 
how it flares way out here. That's 22 and 5 8 over there. 22 and 3 quarters there. So this is what we're talking about. We're talking about right and left. I mean, they're both pointing this that way. way. And we have outlets. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And ideally, that's why I think having, having a right and left, just so when you're looking at them, these are both either on the outside or both on the inside, mm -hmm. you know? Because yeah. that's where the clock spring is and all that, right? So. Yep. So I think we mount this one first, Matt, and then everything else will We'll just match that them, side. Yeah. So wherever this, we'll get this one as tight to the left as we can. Right. Which means you're going to put the base plate like on the stud, basically. Yeah, that's Close exactly what I'm going to do. Yep. Because the stud is centered to the, to the edge of the box. Edge of the box to, to the inside the stud is five inches. So we want to be center stud, which is three quarters. So we need to be five and three quarters from the center of that box to or from the edge of that box to, uh, to our first set of holes. So five and three quarters. Chase, shut your mouth. He's a good guard dog. He's annoying as crap. He, he saw an HOA. You had to train him to see the HOA and then bark when the HOA comes around. Yep. Then I'll get a letter. That the dog barks too much? Yeah. I they feel think, threatened? I think I'm in the clear now. I don't think you're going to leave me alone. You think so? Yeah. You know, if you're big enough pain in the butt, they'd probably be just, yeah, you know what? He's just, there's nothing we can do. I'm, just, I'm not though. Like I'm not doing anything else now. Well, everything's inside. You can't see it. Yeah, that's true. I don't think they're gonna get me for now. Too many cars. Can they? No. That's what that guy was taking pictures of earlier, Matt. No, he was just. Huh? He's. Just, he's he was a Porsche fan driving his. Yeah. His Ford Escape. His regular people here don't see that kind of stuff. <laughs> Fancy. They're just regular people. Nice. Not sometimes not so nice. They don't, they don't do cars. Most people don't do cars. So when they see them, they think it's yeah. like something they don't see. Yeah, they though. probably think you're like a movie star. A drug dealer. A movie star. Drug oh, dealer? Drug dealer, yeah. Yeah. Oh. oh my gosh, it's crazy in here. You got traps. You got oh, turkeys. Oh, can I call and cancel my dentist appointment? What do you say, Michael? I am laying out for our first set of bolts for the electric reel. So we know where we are from center of stud to edge of box, we're five and three quarters, which is what I have here now. So now, and then from, from center of box this way, we're eight inches to center of blocking. So that's where we want to center our reels. So. You know, I've been trying to go to the dentist quarterly. You're trying to get me over this nonsense. Uh-huh. And? Is it working? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I would have been a mess if I... I'm fine. But I'd rather not go. I've got stuff to do. Yeah, so you canceled it? Yeah. You did? Well, we're going to change it. To what? I don't know. Change it to next year. No, like 2023. Uh, I went right for I moved here. I have to find a dentist now. You have a good one, Maddie? Yep. Yeah. I don't know if I want you going there messing up, getting the uh, 
Oh, I set my appointments. <laughs> I'll take the leftovers. I want extra people there. I'll take the leftovers. This is Mormon logic. It's well, very sound logic. I'm a little disappointed, but that's all right. Call me Scrooge McDuck. I was just wanting to get you something. So I'm you gonna be swimming something. in my piles of thirty dollars times three or four. No, I was. I, well, I would make number five. So we could we could get you over a hundred bucks. <laughs> Did you guys set the thirty dollar limit? Is that what it is? I don't, that this is what it always works out to be. Something thirty stupid. bucks. So what kind of tchotchkes do they get you for thirty dollars? I'm just curious. You know, it's just like Rogue Fitness T-shirts. That's oh. all I can think of. It's the only thing I can think of that's less than less than fifty bucks. Really? It's it's just all, all a bunch of junk. Just stop it. Stop this nonsense, everybody. Everybody in the world. <laughs> Now kids, kids, you gotta get them stuff. That's like, it's, it, I feel like my kids didn't have the same, don't have the same enthusiasm what? that I did for you know, Christmas. No? Because no. the, they're rich kids and I was a poor kid. Yeah. See Chris, you get to watch all the inner, deepest, darkest secrets. And you get to choose what stays and what goes. And all of it, all of it stays. It all stays. Anytime I say cut that out, keep it in. <laughs> you might even want to make it part of the intro. So I wonder if other YouTube people, you know, I bet you they think about that all like, oh man, what are people going to think? I don't, I'm, I'm sure mo some of them don't, but I bet you most of them do. Like, man, I don't know. I don't think about that for one second. Just say what needs to be said. Just throw it out there. And I just assume that every video I make, I'm, I'm making at least 10 enemies. <laughs> yeah, as long as you make at least two more than you yeah, yeah, yeah. Get rid of, you're always in the plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You make 12 friends, 10 enemies. Right, right. I am gonna drive in, the, the, I'm using 3 8 by 2 lags. So uh, the theory behind that is that we got an inch and a half back, plus half inch of drywall. That'll bury just to where it's just flush with the top of that. We don't need to be any longer because what's the point of having it out in the wind, right? So anyway, I'm gonna pre-drive these in because the reels, the one thing about these reels is they're hard to get to put a, you can't, you can't use a, an impact driver, right? Because there's no room to get, because the reel's in the way of the base plate. So what I do is pre-drive them all in, then I can go up there with just a socket and a, and a ratchet or, or, or a gear wrench, and they're easier to spin in because I've already driven them in once. So, this should be better now. I do that on purpose on the upper one. That sounds more like it. Yeah. Because I don't want to break the, break the screw, but. Yeah. That's part of an assistant's job, Matt. I know. Gives me a sense of purpose. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll just end up standing around looking pretty. I'm glad. Yeah, and you're not too proud to get a broom. You know, this shows shows your humility, right? Kidding me? I have to pick up more um, um, paper towel crumbles in the bathroom than. I don't know who's the crumbler in this place, but we're gonna we're gonna put a camera in there and find out, Mike. Oh boy. Cameras in the bathroom? Somebody's a crumbler. Yeah, Jeff's you know what I'm talking about? They'd like rip off little pieces and just leave them. Drives me crazy. Someday we're gonna get a cleaning lady. That's what we need. Cleaning man, lady, whatever. 
It's a cleaning, cleaning person. person. Cleaning person. Cleaning people. And you can't even say that. It's a cleaning individual because some people don't identify as people anymore. It could be yeah, well, some other kind of... Yeah, I'm not going down that humoid. one. Humoid. So, what is it? It's three colors. You got... You know, as far as cord, yeah, you got green. So green, green always goes to the ground one. White. White goes to silver, because that's neutral. And then the, the black, which is the, the hot line, it goes to gold. And on these plugs, you want to strip. You don't want too much showing, because once you screw these in, you want to be clamping down the strain relief on the cord jacket rather than on bare um, wire. So how they've got it stripped back is just about right. It's only about an inch from the edge of the jacket. People probably think that though, like, I can see that comment all the time. We're like, oh man, I would not want to work for that guy. I think I'm pretty good to work for, aren't I? Yes. I think so. I mean. Maybe not. <laughs> for anybody who wants to, is looking for a job, working for you, working for a press garage is like, probably, well for me, the best job I could ever ask for. Because really, you're not working for me, you're working for yourself, you know, inside of a, an organization, but. Well, yeah, I mean, it's. It's like, I'm hoping that people get to do what they like to do. Well, yeah, and the purpose. Like, how many times are you gonna say 5,000 square foot garage? I don't know. <laughs> what was, it? no, what was the, the one comment I saw is, take a drink for every time Maddie says boom pull. <laughs> yeah. So, that, that was pretty good. Because how many times do I say so in a video? So, at least 40 times every time. It's how I make my transition, and then you have to edit that out. Like, oh, whenever you see that spike in the audio, that, that you just don't do skip that. You got it right there. Every time. We're going to work on our new project for 2022 is to get rid of ums for me. And that's what we're going to do. You're going to have to raise your hand every time I say it. So now these are black Prolox, and you know, we tested it at my, uh, at uh, the, the previous studio, the one we're tearing apart right now, and uh, it actually works really well. Mm -hmm. You had them in there for a while. Yep. I wasn't sure, certain because this, this cord is a lot, um, more supple. yeah, more pliable. It's mm -hmm. not as, um, not as like plastic. Mm -hmm. There's no pla this is all rubber where that has like a bit of a plastic Yeah, that's to SJO it. cord which is different. And so that, I wasn't certain how it would do inside the power cord rails, but it does, it does great. It relaxes over time anyway, because the thing with this kind of jacket is it kind of takes a memory to however it's stored, you know? Yeah, yep. So we're cutting the mail off, so we can record that reel. Since they're hardwired in, we don't need this anymore. I'm taking a hundred dollar cord and I just cut hacking. $10. I just cut ten dollars off. <laughs> right. Close. Not quite though. So is there any complication of this or just simple wire nuts? And simple wire nuts. So but what you have to make sure though is when this spins around, these wire nuts don't catch. Because as this comes around, if you have them interfering with these, this is stationary, these turn. So yeah. you have to make sure they're nice and tucked this way. That's why they have them zip tied together like that. Mm. So if you do this, you have to do the same thing. Tie them, tie them away from the stationary portion. Otherwise they'll entangle and probably pull the nut loose. And then the other thing too is when you need to note, so you keep the polarity the same, you need to note that the black, the hot wires on this, so for, for instance on this one, it's on the outside pickup. So you need to make sure you do the same. And then ground is on the inside. So it goes black, white, green. On each side you have a anti-vibration clamp. Yep. And what I do, rather than having to redo all these ring terminals and everything, because this is ring terminal to this, and you'd have to put another ring terminal, yeah. I just cut the ground uh -huh. here, yeah. and then I wire nut the new ground to this ground. Yeah, got it. 
And you can see, see how that spins around? If you had these wire nuts out in the breeze, they would catch these, you know, the side yeah. would catch these. We have to do a little bending on our, uh, our drum there. We can, we can bend it while we got the cord out. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty well wonky right here. Obviously, that's not the way it came. I'm sure that you UPS did that. Yeah. Freight company. So I know that you know some people get cranky at this, but you're buying a really expensive hose reel, but they weigh 50, 60 pounds and they're shipping across the country and we box them really well, but they oftentimes require a little bit of adjustment from getting banged around. Yeah, they're pretty heavy. This takes it from home garage to like legit home garage, just putting you know, fancy hose wheels in. Yep. Talking about putting a 90 on the uh, yeah, so we can make. It. So I actually have those in stock. Well, then that would work because see, then you can go real tight. Yeah. And then uh, that gives us the ability to tighten them up, put them closer together. Then you can make them like about like that. Yeah. Real compact. Did you get the fire going? No. That increases them closer together by an inch and a half. Mm-hmm. So. Make them 13 and a half part on the base, outside of base plate to outside of base plate. All right, so next day uh, we're gonna work through, we're gonna finish up the two reels. I'll capture some footage, I'm trying to get the reels in the shot here. I'm on camera today, so from here on out the video is gonna be a little jankier. Um, the, we're gonna do the, that and then we're gonna work on, we brought piping and we brought fittings, so we're gonna work on our piping and see how far we get. All right, rolling through these two hose reels. We thought we were gonna have to move the back or the, what do we call that, the? Uh, blocking. Yeah, the blocking, I don't know why I can't come up with that word today. But we, uh, we were able to catch it there. The, the outlets aren't perfectly symmetrical. They're not, they're not equal to the walls. Well, so. Yeah, they're an inch and a half. So now, the issue with doing hose reels is that, you know, again, they're, bo they're both pointing in the same direction. Yeah, they're both lefts for... Right, so left side, left side, and we have a left and right. And so they both face the same direction, which poses a little bit of a problem for symmetry and then, of course, you know, where our outlet is. So really what you want to do, I guess, is put the outlet on the other side. Or in a perfect world, we'd have a right-handed... Right, and it real. Yeah. If you're going to mount this on the right side, you probably want to make sure you do the power cord before you mount it, because now it's too tight. So they're trying to make it nice and tight. Yep. That makes it way harder to put the darn power cord in. Yeah, you got to be careful with that dude tendency. You know, the tendency would be to, man, this place really, you know what it really needs? It needs a purple stripe all the way across. Yeah. And a checkerboard floor. That would really set it off. You know what it needs? Hex lights. Oh That'll do it. That would be the gosh. That is. Rainbow clock right in the center. 
<laughs> that plastic Brembo clock. Yep. Don't do it, people. I'm not, I'm not, you're not trying to make fun. I'm not giving you a hard time. I'm not saying you suck. I'm just saying we all have this. And if you're getting offended and angry right now, that's how you really know that you're on the wrong track. <laughs> all right, Mike, what's going on here? Where are we at? Uh, hose is loaded. Mm -hmm. Electrical cord, the new cord with the power lock, that's, that's, that's loaded. We're plugged in, shorten the cord. So I'm just dialing in the length here. So it's the same as that side, which is 13 and three quarters. And then we can start running uh, our Prevo piping. You know, our vested time in hose reels, like to get them done right, is a high percentage. It's like darn near cabinet install percentage, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think people need to prepare because you don't, you, you don't think of it as such a big process. No, but to get everything perfected where you got length right, you got the right amount of tension on the clock spring, it takes some time. And then getting them mounted properly and having them spaced and square and yeah, I mean, it's to make it look like it does now, it's, it's a fair amount of time to get them right. Yeah. But now look, they look amazing. Yeah. Well, it also feels a little bit more intensive because we, you know, we kind of jumped back and forth between these and the pressure washer yesterday. But That's true. I mean, That's we true. Still have four or five hours into getting these suckers up there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had because you include the backing. We had to put backing and get up in the yeah. attic. Luckily, you we have didn't an attic have to space. Fix any drywall. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, that adds even more time. Yeah. You know. So yeah, it's it's definitely a. Definitely a labor of love though, now that it's done. So I lost, we just, we just coined a new phrase called maximum tiptoe, MTT setting. That's the MTT setting for hose reels. I, I couldn't do MTT because they looked like it was too short. Yeah, but the stop was like this MT, close. MTT would be height and then a, a reach. A reach, and a, but a reach, like a full reach, not just a reach reach, but you gotta go like, a, like an extended reach. That's the way to go, but unfortunately it looked too, Stubby. A little too stubby, yeah. And so we're not MTT height. We're we're five inches below, and then maybe eight inches below MTT height. Probably eight. So but I think they're perfect right now. Yeah. I can still reach them. Yeah. So that's what we we got. We got a I got a full call this a full HG full hand grip full hand grip height HGH mm -hmm. different kind of HGH full hand grip. Anyway, that's what, that's how you set it. Teach you something. He's putting that's the, uh, a seven thousand dollar speaker. Putting you the laser it. level on my my Dynaudio Heritage Special. Yeah. It's called special for a reason. Yeah, special, specially expensive. It's for special needs. Yeah. yeah. Get my tape. See the Prevost line. People always want to complain about the Prevost line. To me, the Prevost line takes this from. Yuppie garage, fancy, what are we, what are we calling a classy, classy garage? Classy garage. To like a real garage. Still right. classy, but real classy. Okay. So Functionally classy. Yeah, this takes it from when you put the hose reels, you put the piping, the air compressor, floor jacks, lift. That's what takes this real clean, you know, yuppie garage. And sterile, you know, no work done garage to work done, but just work done in a real um, efficient, you know, functional way. Uh, and so that's where doing this kind of stuff. I mean, I'm gonna, I, I'll use this darn thing daily, especially the power cords. Yep. I use them all the darn time. Now, most of the time I'm using them is to clean, right? Yeah. Uh, but keep it looking this way. Yeah. But that requires an extra level of excellence and effort toward excellence that I think most are unwilling to do. In many cases, it's just that those people aren't afflicted with the same affliction. But that's what takes, so these little details that we're doing here, and, and these are expense, very expensive details, yep. but it, what, it's what makes this area functional. So it takes, you know, it takes away from the, I bet you don't use this stuff to, I don't know if it does that. I know it doesn't do that because no one thinks I use any of this. But I make freaking videos of using it. So yeah. anyway, that's what I'm. 
use it. I mean, the hoses that we just put up here were the hoses that were down at OG and they were filthy because you used them so much. Yeah. So okay. you're using them. We had to clean them first, but yeah. yeah. So by the way, we used some stoner's uh, tarminator and uh, you know, just a microfiber towel to clean off the nitro rubber. So we want to be at, right there is 14 here. That's where we want to be, but you're in too far. So bring it out a little bit. I can tell right here, bring it towards you. This is a lot better than going back and forth. Can't really reach. Well, you're way, way in. You're probably pretty close there. I'm at 12. Okay. Can you do 13? See, you're blocking the beam for me though. Oh, well, no, I'm at 14. What are you? Yeah, almost 14. I'm at 14 and a quarter. Okay. So swing me out a little bit, a quarter, and we'll be good. Yep, 14 and a quarter. All right, call that good. Let me show you what we got. So we got a little bit of Stoflex. We don't need a lot of this because we're going to be just doing a tiny little whip. So we got some raw Stoflex hose. We got some hardware for, so these are barb fittings, which go into the hose here. Okay. Our fittings will go there. We've got some ear clamp covers because we'll be using. Did we get some ear clamps? Yeah, I did. So we got some clamps. The clamps I'll show you those. On. That's these. Okay, so that's what these guys are for. And we'll show you all this as we install it. We've got some ear clamp tools or tool. I'm not sure. I might have one of these somewhere. So I'll make sure I open that. And then we get so we got three eighths. Barb, barb and half inch. We did get tape. Yep. And Mike didn't believe me that the um, the hose reels are three eighths, so we brought an extra set of half, which we won't need. But these are three eighths barbs, which um, so this threaded end will go on the inlet to the um, the hose reels. And then we got some half inch valves. So there's they're half inch female on both sides, and so this is where one of the barb fittings will go in here. That's where the whip hose will then connect to our hose reel. Okay. The other end uh, will screw on to a, uh, a half inch male pipe. It'll convert our pipe to our valve, which then we can then connect our, our whip hose. These are our ceiling and wall clamps. So these open up, this clamps the pipe. And so we'll use drywall anchors to mount those to the drywall or hit a stud if we hit one. Well, we're gonna try to hit Joyce. Since they're running perpendicular, we can do that. We won't need 20 of those, but I brought them just in case. We got 90s, so the 90, so making the transition from wall to ceiling and ceiling to other sections of the ceiling. So these 90s will go there. There's our unions there. These are because, um, so I got six unions, we probably only need a couple of these, but um, we're using Six and six foot half foot sections. So the pipe comes in 19 foot seven inch sections. The problem is, is that it's unshippable. You know, you can't ship uh, via UPS or FedEx or USPS. You can't ship a box that big. And so the overall dimensions are too large. Uh, and so what we do is we cut the pipe ourselves. We cut it and then we deburr it and ship it out in six foot six inch sections. Because uh, that's the biggest that we can send reasonably in a box and have it cost, you know, 30, 40 bucks a ship instead of four, five, six hundred. Like you could buy one fifty dollar 19 foot pipe that costs you 480 bucks to ship because it needs to come in a 20 foot tube, you know, and that tube has to go freight. And then that freight takes up a lot of space on a truck because it can't stack it. Uh, and so it becomes a real shippable nightmare. And so what I do is we'll buy, you know, 220 foot sections at a time and, and then cut it down and then make it shippable for you so it's a little bit easier for you to buy. Because unless like a garage like this, you'd need like, what do you think? One and a half, maybe two, two 19 foot pipes. Yeah. This whole garage. So I brought eight, eight, six foot sections, which of course we're not gonna need that much, but I brought this here anyway. Yeah. And by the way, I made a choice, you know, they have, they have half inch pipe all the way up to four inch pipe. Uh, we do one inch, the one inch just seems to make, make sense. I think it looks the best. So we just do everything in one inch, even though it's way overkill from the, air, from the amount of air that we're delivering in any garage. And so this was the fitting I was talking about that's gonna screw into our, to our valve. 
So these are um, half inch male, so pipe, one inch pipe to half inch male. We have a couple of T's that we're gonna use. Uh, actually, I think we only need one T. So I had a, an old one left over, so we'll probably just use that. We have our 90s, we have our plugs for our air guns. Did you find Teflon tape? Yeah, there's okay. more. Okay. We have a wall manifold, and we yeah. have some Blowers. female fittings, which I probably won't need, but I, I like to have, I think it's smart, get, it, get yourself a 10 pack of each of these, and we'll throw them in the drawer somewhere, that way if you ever get a new tool or something like that. Uh, but all these, all my Prevos air guns, and I like to have, these are the four that I stock. Uh, we also stock them in, in, um, in uh, um, your, uh, industrial version as well, but we'll get into that and show you all the stuff. So this, this garage, I could add it up, but it's probably 350 bucks worth of stuff, 500 bucks maybe, worth of pipe and fittings and all that stuff to do it. So what are you looking at me for? Just it, listening to oh, your yeah. expertise. <laughs> all right. So over here. What am I looking at you for? Yeah, what are you looking at me for? <laughs> Don't make you, that make you nervous? No. I'm just like, let's go. <laughs> well, I was waiting for you to ex finish explaining. So where should we bring the pipe up? Well, the pressure's going right here, right? Correct. So I would, and the outlet on the compressor's on the right, is Correct. it not? So, and it's gonna face this way, right? Correct. So we should bring it up right here. Yeah, right next to the window there. All right. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna make sure there's a joist here first. I think that's, that's the edge of it. That's it. Okay. Now I'll take a clamp. threads. So we took and um, we have a, uh, a stainless uh, pressure washer, high pressure 90, and um, put that on the on the air hose reel so that way it you know turns the air, turns the air line so we can come straight in instead of looping it out. Yeah. Barb fitting from these guys into the 90. So the hose, the hose reel, you can see up here. The hose reel has a female inlet. So there's a female inlet and we put a screw to male to female 90. The street, street elbow. Street elbow. Yep. Yeah. And then um, take this, you know, NPT 3 8 barb fitting, screw that in there. And then this hose, Hose, well, we'll put an ear, ear, we'll put a cover on, but then the hose will just go into the barb fitting like this, and then you put an ear clamp on there to clamp it down, and you're good to go. So this is what he's gonna do with the ear clamp protector, or ear clamp, I should say. You take a clamp tool, ear clamp, whatever they call these things, ear clamp pliers, and you crimp that, and smash that down like that. And that's what clamps the barb fitting on. Make sure air doesn't leak around it. Or I need something like when you got some something I can use to lubricate these and slide them on. Uh, what would work? Uh, maybe some clay lube. Clay lube or even even glass cleaner works.
So you see the before my finger. So there's the there's the 90. You just ear clamped. And then we'll put it on the ear clamp protector just to clean it, just to make it look finished. You don't need that, but can't hurt to have it. This. I mean, that hose that length is right there. Yeah. So, tape measure is. Right. Oh, I left it on top of the cabinet down there. Can you reach it? Yep. Thank you. And my pipe cutter. Prevost pipe cutter, Prevost reamer, really expensive but really nice. These screws are not big enough. They blow through. We're gonna have to use the bigger anchors because these heads are too small. Oh, that's why we were using the big ones. Mm -hmm. All coming back to me now. I'll take this one out. You guys gonna stud that, stud him out or what? Thought about it? Yeah. Show him had him set up with some tool or something. the ear clamp tool and just clamps down on the ears, on the ends, pulls it into place, locks it down and then you put the cover on there. It's really to protect the ear clamp and for us it's to make it look pretty. We don't make hose reels that are, I think we talked about this earlier, that are right and left handed and so we're doing because this this one is the termination so that's the termination of our Prevost setup this here is the um, you know in the middle middle of the line so this one has a T so you see that point to that T there instead of uh, 
Yeah. So this is a T instead of a, a 90. For the same setup. All right, so now we're making the transition. So we set our line at the same, you know, roughly 14 inches off the wall. And then put in the clamp, and then we make a 90. All right, people, that's a wrap on the, uh, the hose reel and base of the Prevost. We still have to run it down for the air compressor. We'll do a video on the compressor install. We got a lot done this weekend. We got the pressure washer done. I guess it's not the weekend, is it? It feels like it's the weekend, doesn't it? I guess because it's the week before Thanksgiving. Uh, and uh, so we got the, the you know, air and power done. We got the Prevost done. Um, you know, we sell all this stuff, by the way, if, if you uh, couldn't tell. Go to ObsessedGarage.com. Super helpful to me if you buy the stuff from us. Uh, now, some of it, we're, you know, we're the only ones selling it, but some of it you can get you know, multiple places. But you know, they, one of the things, one of the really daunting tasks I had uh, not too long ago, you know, a couple of years ago, was to try to figure out how to put Prevost in the store. And I think we've done a good job of that. We have a ways to go to continue to educate people on how to buy it. but. Um, it's uh, not super complicated if you draw it out uh, and then just sort of use the Obsessed Garage page with all the products as the products you need. So we narrowed it down from a 300 play page catalog down to you know a few dozen SKUs. Uh, and so you ought to be able to put together a package. If you need some help, uh, shoot an email to, to uh, design at obsessedgarage.com. Kyle and his team can uh, help you figure out what to get. Uh, and then you can always reach out to me, Matt, at obsessedgarage.com and um, we'll be happy to help you out. So thanks for watching. Uh, Home garage is coming together. It uh, certainly looks good on camera. Looks even better in person. Yeah, I think uh, I think this is going to be a nice place to hang out for a couple of years while we're building our other house. But uh, if we're going to be here for a couple of years, we might as well make it good. So thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. See you on the next one.